Welcome to College Football Live, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Hello, everybody. Welcome to College Football Live. As we make our way towards a new month, October 1st on Friday, Wendy Nix and Desmond Howard here with you. And we talked about it yesterday, but it is worth noting again, 25 top 25 teams have lost so far this season. And we're bound to have more because we've got four ranked v. ranked matchups this weekend. We'll start with the top 10, seventh ranked Cincinnati traveling to face number nine, Notre Dame. Brian Kelly will be taking on his former team for the first time in his career. Next, we head down to still water where the 19th ranked Cowboys will host the 21st ranked Baylor Bears in a Big 12 showdown. Dave Aranda's squad will be looking for its third win in Boone Pickens Stadium in the last four visits. And now we head to SEC country where the red hot number eight Razorbacks will travel to Athens to take on number two team in the country. That would be the Georgia Bulldogs. They're eight and one against Arkansas since 2000. And finally, arguably the most exciting matchup of the week comes in Tuscaloosa. Number 12 Ole Miss faces off against number one Alabama in what will be a battle between the two Heisman front runners this season. Uh, these two teams have faced off before. We saw this addition last year, Des, but uh, let's start with the offense of Ole Miss. Look, they, they can put up some points. I mean, I, I think there were 345 points scored in this game last year. Uh, what, what problems might they <laughs> pose for Alabama's defense? Well, I tell you what, Wendy, coming into the 2021 season, everyone that I spoke with that had anything to do with Alabama's program talked about how great this defense was. This is probably one of the best defenses Nick Saban has ever had. And I was like, okay, I was buying into it. But then the Florida game, I started to notice some chinks in the armor. Now, there's one thing you know about Lane Kiffin. Lane Kiffin is definitely an offensive genius. If there are any weaknesses in your defense... He's going to find those weaknesses and exploit them. So you know they're going to uh, you know, put up a lot of points, uh, gain a lot of yards with Matt Corral at the quarterback position. I expect, Nick, um, I expect Nick Saban's defense to try to make sure that they can blitz Matt Corral, try to put some pressure on him right there. He's like a dual threat quarterback. Now he can run, but he loves to throw the ball all over the field. He has a bunch of weapons, and that's what he's going to try to do, stretch the field, not only defend the field vertically, but defend the field horizontally too. So with that said, I think that, uh, I tell you what, this offense that they got is explosive, exciting, and they're going to try to attack that defense on all fronts, Wendy. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I, I suspect they'll strike early and often. But, Des, let me ask you on the flip side, uh, because what, what good for one, good for the other, uh, can Ole Miss, I mean, I'm sorry, can, can Alabama, uh, can Ole Miss's defense pose any kind of real threat to Alabama? I tell you what, that's, that's going to be the, 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 the key to this victory for either team is going to be how the defense plays. And I tell you what, Ole Miss is going to pull off this upset. It's going to start with their defensive coordinator, DJ Durkin, and that defense. Now, they run this funky, like, 3-2-6 um, figuration of a defense, which means they have, like, six defensive backs or hybrids back there. When you do that, when it means that you can you can – Put different players in different positions and confuse the quarterback. I Meaning you may have a cornerback who lines up at the safety, but then he comes down in the box, and you may have seven or eight in the box. Um, back in, it can give Bryce Young, Alabama's young quarterback, some issues early on. Pre-snap read, post-snap read may not be the same thing. And when you're able to do that to a young quarterback, Wendy, what it does is it causes hesitation. He's starting to think. He's starting to second-guess himself. And at that point, that's when the rush gets to him. So DJ Durkin and they're going to come with that 3-2-6 defensive scheme and try to confuse young Bryce Young. Well, young being the pivotal word there, and you know as well as I do, when you start down yourself, wonder what, you know what, you've got trouble and it can happen in a hurry. I mentioned this before, if you don't believe me, just take a look. I wasn't kidding. Last year's matchup, it was also Lane Kiffin facing his former employee and perhaps mentor, Ole Miss and Alabama, and I mean, it was nothing but offense. The highest scoring game in the series, it ends with Alabama winning 63 to 48. Almost 1,400 total yards of offense, 100 
and 11 combined points. That was the first meeting, of course, between Kiffin and Saban. So we take a look at What's Your Beef brought to you by Old Trapper. This is incredible, really, because you'd think there'd be a trip up somewhere along the line. Nick Saban, an outstanding 23-0 when facing former Alabama assistants. Reminder that Old Miss head coach Lane Kiffin, the offensive coordinator for the Tide under Saban for two years, 2014 to 2016. We went through this last year, and it really, I don't know if it was such a thing. I, this year, maybe. Is this the time, Des, or is this, maybe I should just say, is this the season that we see a little bit of a blemish on Nick Saban's record against his former assistants? I tell you what, we've seen some strange things thus far this season, like 25 um, ranked AP teams have lost already. The, the, the most I've lost since the 1930s. So I would not put that past um, Nick Saban to lose a game. And I tell you what, the thing about this old Miss team that really concerned, that, that really has me excited about this game is that I heard their safety, Jalen Jones. Jalen Jones said that we have changed the culture here at Ole Miss. He said there is more like a brotherhood. We play for one another, and it shows on the field. He said defensively, we come with a whole completely different attitude. Wendy, last year, if Ole Miss could have gotten a couple stops, then they could, they could have won that ball game. So now you're looking at a defense that's playing much better now. They have much more confidence. They understand the scheme. All the players know where they're supposed to, where they're supposed to be and what they're supposed to do. If they can get a couple of stops, this is going to be a really, really interesting matchup in Tuscaloosa. So this just might be the time where the grasshopper snatches the pebble from the teacher's hand. Mercury's in retrograde, Des. You know what that means. All kind of crazy stuff happens, all right? And in this case, it might yep. mean Ole Miss plays a little defense, uh, like last year. We shall see. Uh, this next game we're going to talk about yeah. is what I'm looking forward to, and it's because at the outset of the season, we sort of said, okay, Cincinnati's doing all the right things if they want to make some noise, and I mean in terms of scheduling. So here it is. Notre Dame plays its toughest opponent of the season to date. That's the number seven Cincinnati Bearcats. They travel to South Bend. The Irish, of course, ranked number nine making this the second straight ranked opponent the Irish will play. Caesar Sportsbook, by the way, has the Bearcats favored by two. So here's a look at the impact this game will have for each team with regards to the college football playoff. With a win, the Bearcats would jump from an 11% chance to make the CFP to a 22% chance. However, with a loss, it goes all the way down to 2%. Now for the Irish, if a win, they jump from 22 to 31. With a loss, they fall to just Eight. In other words, uh, this game has a huge impact on what's to come later in the season, Des. And I, you could go any direction with this, but what will you be watching specifically? Well, the first thing I'm going to keep an eye on is the quarterback situation at Notre Dame. I mean, you know that the last game they played against Wisconsin and Chicago, I was there and I'm looking at Jack Cohn and Jack Cohn played okay, but then he went out the game with a lower leg injury and then came Drew Pine. And Drew Pine struggled early, but then he, he, he actually got into a groove and played extremely well. Now, Coach Kelly said that Jack Cohn should be ready for this game. But if he's not, I want to see what Drew Pine does um, for the Fighting Irish. So that quarterback situation is one to watch. Don't forget, that Wisconsin game was very, very close until the fourth quarter. And then that's when it broke open and merged through two pick sixes. Um, Notre Dame had a kickoff return for a touchdown in the second half. And that's when it kind of got out of hand. But that was a really, really competitive game. So keep an eye on the quarterback situation at Notre Dame. Jess, let me ask you this. I, I mentioned it earlier. The Irish play a ranked opponent for the second straight week. It will be electric in South Bend. So I can't imagine this would be a situation that Brian Kelly doesn't have his team ready, that they would look past Cincinnati in, in any way. Uh, do you anticipate the same thing? Will they come ready to play, understanding that anything could happen in this game? Yeah, I believe that Notre Dame will be ready to play because they understand that this is like, uh, I guess you would, it's tantamount to Cincinnati Super Bowl. They understand that in order for them at the end of the season, like you alluded to, if they're going to be a part of college football playoff, um, if they're going to be part of college football playoff um, conversation, then they have to win this game. Now, they already knocked off a Power 5 team in Indiana. If they can knock off Notre Dame and then run the table and win their conference championship, 
then they will have a strong case when it's all said and done about being a, a team that should be strongly considered for the college football playoff. And don't forget, uh, Coach Kelly used to coach in Cincinnati. His defensive coordinator, Freeman, Coach Freeman used to coach in Cincinnati. So, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot of storylines involved in this ball game. This is not like, hey, we're just going to play this group of five team, you know, and roll our hammers out there and win. There are a lot of storylines that, that, that Coach Kelly can point to and say, okay, guys, we got to take these dudes seriously. They can play football very well. There, there's no question. And on the flip side, Cincinnati understands uh, what going in there would mean. They know what they're up against. But again, when they set up their schedule and say, hey, if we're going to be that, be that team to sort of come from the outside in, this is what has to happen. So the opportunity is there. I can't wait for this game. And I love the fact that Brian Kelly has so many former ties to Cincinnati. Uh, is South Bend your favorite college football town? I don't know. You tell me. Uh, we're going to tell you to head to ESPN at ESPN CFB on social to vote for your favorite town in the football town showdown that's presented by Shell. Those games just the start of a seismic Saturday slate of games. When we come back, we'll go channel surfing on the other must-see games of the weekend. And there's a resurgence in Fayetteville with Sam Pittman and the Arkansas Razorbacks. Jim Lada sits down with the coach to find what has been his keys to success. College Football Live is presented by Buffalo Wild Wings and in part by Allstate. Save money like a champion with Allstate. Really surprised me defensively. They've been outstanding. We're talking about six takeaways so far on the season and they've converted three of those into touchdowns. This group, is they are ball hawks in the secondary up front. They play really strong against the run. And then you look at Maryland, they're number one in the conference, passing the ball. I think this passing offense against the Hawkeyes defense is going to be a great one. Well, it's going to be a great one in Fort Worth as well. I, I, I tell you what, Texas, terrible in the offensive line three weeks ago, runs rough shot all over Texas Tech. Last week, scoring 70 points behind Bijan Robinson and a much improved offensive line for the Texas Longhorns. And TCU coming off of a matchup where they lose to SMU and give up 350 yards on the ground. Something's got to give in Fort Worth. Hey, Lou, talking about something's got to give. What's going on with the Sooners? I mean, listen. Spencer Rattler came in as the Heisman favorite, and then a week ago against West Virginia, game at home, he got booed by his own fans, and they have to take a trip to Manhattan to take on Kansas State, a team that's beaten them the last couple of seasons, last two se uh, games. But I tell you what, this is going to be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Oklahoma versus Kansas State lose. No doubt about it. How about this one? Arkansas on the road, a huge road test. And I think it's huge for George on defense. You're going to have to defend an athletic quarterback in K.J. Jefferson and explosive plays from Traylon Burks and company. They can beat you so many ways through the air, on the ground, and a creative quarterback. Conversely, can Georgia defensively impact and affect J.T. Daniels if he's to go for the Georgia Bulldogs? That's the key for Arkansas on defense. Listen, guys, if you're looking for life's little joys, there's very few better than a Saturday afternoon game between the hedges. If you haven't done it, there's there's not a whole lot better. Uh, what's also interesting is that two years ago, Sam Pittman was an unconventional choice to lead an SEC team. But in just two seasons, he's changing the culture of the Arkansas Razorbacks with his coaching style, his authenticity, and a rallying call that resonates with his players. I'm so tired of hearing about where we've been. It's where we're headed and where we're going. To get where we want to go, you can't be satisfied where you're at. What is the state of Arkansas football? Well, really surprised me. Defensively, they've been outstanding. We're talking about six takeaways so far on the season, and they've converted three of those into touchdowns. This group, is, they are ball hawks in the secondary up front. They play really strong against the run. And then you look at Maryland, they're number one in the conference passing the ball. I think this passing offense against the Hawkeyes defense is going to be a great one. Well, it's going to be a great one in Fort Worth as well. I, I, I tell you what, Texas, terrible in the offensive line three weeks ago, runs rough shot all over Texas Tech. 
last week, scoring 70 points behind B. John Robinson and a much improved offensive line for the Texas Longhorns. And TCU coming off of a matchup where they lose to SMU and give up 350 yards on the ground. Something's got to give in Fort Worth. Hey, Lou, talking about something's got to give. What's going on with the Sooners? I mean, listen. Spencer Rattler came in as the Heisman favorite, and then a week ago against West Virginia, game at home, he got booed by his own fans, and they have to take a trip to Manhattan to take on Kansas State, a team that's beaten them the last couple of seasons, last two se uh, games. But I tell you what, this is going to be an interesting one to keep an eye on. Oklahoma versus Kansas State lose. No doubt about it. How about this one? Arkansas on the road, a huge road test. And I think it's huge for George on defense. You're going to have to defend an athletic quarterback in K.J. Jefferson and explosive plays from Traylon Burks and company. They can beat you so many ways through the air, on the ground, and a creative quarterback. Conversely, can Georgia defensively impact and affect J.T. Daniels if he's to go for the Georgia Bulldogs? That's the key for Arkansas on defense. Listen, guys, if you're looking for life's little joys, there's very few better than a Saturday afternoon game between the hedges. If you haven't done it, there's, there's not a whole lot better. Uh, what's also interesting is that two years ago, Sam Pittman was an unconventional choice to lead an SEC team. But in just two seasons, he's changing the culture of the Arkansas Razorbacks with his coaching style, his authenticity, and a rallying call that resonates with his players. I'm so tired of hearing about where we've been. It's where we're headed and where we're going. To get where we want to go, you can't be satisfied where you're at. What is the state of Arkansas football? Love.